Caparaja is a super overlooked Pokemon. It has an amazing base 130 attack, paired with 122 HP, but it's a steel elephant weighing 1400 pounds, so it's pretty slow. It turns out it's actually heavier than that because its ability Heavy Metal doubles its weight. This can be paired with Stab Heavy Slam, which becomes 120 base power most of the time, along with Heat Crash, which is also based off of weight. Caparaja has enough bulk to survive attacks, and performs really well under Trick Room because of its slow speed, and can dish out some devastating weight-based damage. I've always really liked Caparaja. It's just a dude that really never gets a whole lot of love, but that is what I am here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So one thing I don't really mess around with a whole lot is Trick Room. And today that's going to change because I have a very interesting Trick Room team. And this turns out to be an insane battle. So my opponent leads off with the most angry turtle I've ever seen. I decide to toss out an orange peel. And right off the bat, he just goes right for that ice beam. I'm thinking, hey, that's fine. I live. However... Boom, my ass is a popsicle, and that's like, gotta be the worst way to start a match. Literally turn one, I am frozen, and I do at least, it does allow me to activate my red card, so that does force a switch uh, of the Blastoise. I was really kind of hoping they would go for a shell smash. I could then live with Sturdy, get up my Stealth Rock, and at least be able to get some type of value out of this damn Dawn fan, but sometimes that 10% chance comes and just kicks you square in the nuts, so... That's just something I'm gonna have to deal with. I decide I'm just gonna leave in Dawn fan here, I don't really have a whole lot that wants to switch into Arcanine. Plus, I kind of want to see what this thing wants to do. It turns out Buddy's going to go ahead and get fully blinged out. He goes right for the Terra Normal and uh, is going to go for that Extreme Speed. So, doing his best Dragonite impression, Terra Normal Extreme Speed is extremely scary. I also don't really know what item this thing is holding. I'm imagining it's probably like a Choice Band set. Uh, and this thing is definitely an issue. So, first of all, I don't know exactly what this wants to do. I do know, however, that Smart Paul can come in here and at least take an attack and potentially set up a Trick Room and do some fun stuff. So I realize it's actually in my best interest here to go for a Skull. The reason is I need to get some Chip off on this thing and also a Burn would be absolutely amazing. So they of course stay in, they go for that Extreme Speed once again. It does a whole bunch of damage and luckily my Skull does actually not only knock this thing around half but also get the Burn which is amazing. Shout out to Scald for actually doing what it's supposed to for you boy sometimes. We appreciate it. Anyway, at this point, I, I saw the damage from the first Extreme Speed, and I know that with the burn, I should be able to take one more, which is actually going to be able to put me in a position where I can go for that Trick Room. And hold on to your hats, because shit is about to get tricky up in here. Now, I am able to barely hang on from the next Extreme Speed just because of that burn. I can then make the room look all crazy, and uh, we twist the dimensions around. So... Trick Room in singles is especially difficult, because there's not a lot of turns to work with. But if I can pull it off correctly, I can get my slower mons to be extremely effective. Now, of course, looking at the face of an extreme speed mon priority does not see, take into account that the room looks all crazy. So, Trick Room's not quite going to help me there. But for the next turns, I'm going to be able to take advantage. Plus, I actually just decide to switch out the Slowking uh, because I can get that Regenerator to activate. And I decide to bring in the Crab. Crabominable is a very slow fell who does, of course, enjoy uh, the Trick Room support. And this thing can actually do some pretty solid damage. So... We actually end up having a nice little double switch. They decide to go into the Ursaluna. At this point, I'm staring a bear in the face, and it's either punch this thing in the face or run. And I decide I'm going to go punch it. And it just barely is able to live. And this, it turns out this bear actually has absolute nuts of steel. It goes for the Focus Miss and does, in fact, connect on that. So Focus Blast kills the Crab Abominable, and that is actually quite unfortunate. But... At least I was able to knock this thing down to a point where it's much more manageable. And I figure, you know what, it's time to bring out the Black Kitty and potentially Umbreon can try to get something going here. So, we saw that they went for the trick or the Focus Blast earlier. I'm thinking potentially they go for the Focus Blast against the Umbreon here. And I can try to capitalize on that by going for the Terra Fairy, plus going for the Curse. Now, under Trick Room, it's actually kind of funny that I am going to be faster <laughs> than the Blood Moon before I get a Curse up. But... I go for that Terra Fairy. It is actually going to end up going for the Blood Moon. Luckily, I'm the bulkiest damn kitty around. I'm able to take it pretty nicely. And this allows me to go for the Curse. So, we saw this thing was faster before. But since I dropped my speed one stage, I now should be faster than this thing. And I really wanted to see if I can try to get this Umbreon going. Uh, it's kind of supposed to be a nice little offensive sweeper Umbreon, which catches a lot of people off guard. And I did have to commit my Terra here. But at this point, at least... I know that I'm faster, I can go ahead and chop his ass in the throat, 
and that's going to take care of the Blood Moon. So that's one of the scariest big fellas out of the way. Unfortunately, however, I did take just more damage than I was kind of anticipating uh, with the Umbreon. I was really hoping that they were going to go for another Focus Blast, but uh, the Blood Moon, it does make sense. Also, the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, meaning now Umbreon is just back to being slow as shit. So... They decide to go back into the Blastoise, and I still don't really know exactly what type of Blastoise this is. I imagine everything to be, I just assume that they're Shell Smash, but uh, they actually go for the Flash Cannon, and since I'm so incredibly bulky, I can actually live, which allows me to go for the Moonlight, and I can kind of just uh, scout this out here. I saw how much damage that initially did, and with the Moonlight plus the Leftovers, I'm actually going to be in a spot where I can definitely take another one, and I can get some much needed chip off on uh, old Blastoise here. So I just decided to go for the Throat Chomp. However, they realize they don't have quite enough damage, plus they know that I can just Moonlight up uh, all day over here, or night, I suppose. But they go for that Shell Smash to try to get some extra damage. Uh, it is also gonna drop this thing's defenses. However, most of the time you're going up against a Blastoise, it is gonna have that White Herb, which does get rid of those defense drops. But this thing is actually pretty scary. Now the good news is Throat Chop does do around half. And after leftover recovery, I'm sitting pretty close to full. And uh, judging by how much damage the first flash cannon did, there's actually a pretty good chance that I can actually take another one here. So Throat Chop is going to be another two-hit KO here if I can live a flash cannon. I do with 21 HP, which is amazing. And Umbreon is an absolute beast. So that takes care of the Blastoise. Anytime there's a Shell Smash threat, it is always a, a win condition. So seeing that thing gone is absolutely amazing. But it's really feeling like uh, Umbreon is kind of a little bit short-lived here. I don't have a lot of health left. I'm going to be slower than everything. And it kind of a, I've done what I can with this thing. So they decide on the empty switch to go right back into the Arcanine. Arcanine is still extremely scary. And obviously, it's going to be able to just knock me out with it. whatever. I decide to just go for the Moonlight on the off chance that I live something. However, uh, the Terra normal boost of extreme speed is just too damn much. It does take care of Umbreon here. But I feel like I did what I needed to do. I, I poked some holes in the team. And it's starting to feel like Kaparaja can come back as a win condition for me under some certain circumstances with the Trick Room. Some of their scariest Pokemon left is going to be things like that Iron Valiant. And I basically what I have left is two Trick Room setters and a Vagan Elephant. So I'm in kind of a weird position here, except I can go into the Slowking, who after Regenerator is in a spot where I know that I can take an Extreme Speed, and I can set back up the Trick Room and be in a position here to try to get the Kaparaja to do what I needed to do, but there's definitely yeah, some work to be done. So, I live the extreme speed, set back up the trick room, and I've got a pretty good option to actually switch directly into the Kaparaja here. Uh, I'm running Assault Vest on the thing just so that it's able to take special attacks super nicely. However, with this thing being likely locked into the extreme speed, I can definitely just go into Kaparaja here for free and try to take advantage of as many trick room turns as I can. So, I bring in the big ass boxy elephant. Butterball is looking like one of those old ass television sets from like the 90s, old boxy and shit. It turns out the extreme speed, he actually runs out of PvP, forces him to go for the struggle. And uh, that's actually kind of hilarious. This thing has been extreme speed and all over the damn place, and uh, he runs out. So it actually struggles itself to death, essentially, uh, where the burn is actually going to take care of it. So that's just going to finish off the Arcanine, and that is actually amazing, because uh, now it's feeling like Kaparaj is in a pretty decent position, especially uh, against uh, things like the Chin Pao, and that Iron Valiant that I mentioned earlier. So, at this point, behind the Trick Room, I know that I'm faster here. So I just stay in, I'm gonna go for that Heavy Slam, and that is like 10,000 pounds of Elephant just landing right on your noodle, and uh, that's gonna hurt. However, it is gonna be Focus Sashed, which is quite unfortunate. It allows them to fire off a Sacred Sword, which doesn't quite knock me out, which is actually amazing. And this is gonna allow me to still be faster, taking advantage of that Trick Room, and finish it with one more Heavy Slam. So. Not being able to get up the Stealth Rock was quite unfortunate with that thing keeping its Focus Sash intact. However, the Elephant clutches out the live there, and baby, there's a chance. So, they're down to two Pokemon left, one of them being the Umbreon and then that Iron Valiant. So, I know that I don't have enough to be able to knock out uh, the Umbreon here, so I want to try to switch out, conserve the Kaparaja, and it's going to require me to get back up the Trick Room if I want to finish off uh, the Valiant and be able to outspeed it. So, I decided to go into the Slowking. I figure... You know, I can probably take an attack from this thing. I mostly am trying to conserve uh, the Yuxi, who is Focus Ash, who guarantees that I can get up the Trick Room. So, uh, Slowking comes in, the Dimensions Return to Normal has actually went for the Baby Doll Eyes, which just drops my physical attack, does not matter at all. But I also know that it's going to be very important for me to get some chip damage off on the Umbreon if I want to allow the Kaparaja to kill it. So, I decided to just go for the Scald, as uh, this thing actually ends up setting up the Calm Mind. It's kind of funny 
We actually both have like very different Umbreons here. So I do actually get a second Scald Burn, which is good, but also kind of unfortunate because I feel like I've used up all my hot water luck for the next 10 matches. But uh, the burn is extremely nice, and that is actually going to bring this thing to around half to where a Heavy Slam is actually looking like I should be able to do it. So on this turn, I decide to go for the Trick Room. I definitely need that up for the Cop Raja to be able to do its thing. Turns out they actually go for the Baby Doll Eyes, potentially expecting a switch. However, I just make the room look all crazy and uh, the dimensions are all twisted the fuck up out here. So, uh, at this point, there's enough turns to where I should be able to capitalize with the Caparaja. And uh, I really just mostly needed some chip off on this thing and set up the trick room. I've done what I needed to do. Now the next step of that is going to be able to try, try to get in the Caparaja safely. So, now with the trick room up, I am going to be faster, which does allow me to tell a shitty joke uh, super fast. <laughs> and I go for that chilly reception. It makes it snow indoors. That's how bad my joke is. And at this point, I'm kind of in a position where I can't hard switch into the Caparaja here. As much as I need to get this thing in and take advantage of those Trick Room turns, I actually first need to go into Yuxi. And uh, I really kind of count on this thing being able to kill the Yuxi. I bring in old Lemonhead here. It does actually go for that Dark Pulse, and it is going to be a nice two-hit KO here. So at this point, we're looking at three turns left of the Trick Room. And I really need this thing to either die or uh, me to die. You know, it's actually faster because of the Trick Room. So it finishes off my Yuxi, but uh, while that does seem initially kind of bad, it's, here's why it's actually good. And that is because with Yuxi gone, I now have the two turns of Trick Room and that should be all that Copper Raja needs to pull out the, the clutch in the match here. So I bring back in Butterball, who's been beat within an inch of his damn life. However, I should be faster under Trick Room here. I can go for that Heavy Slam. And luckily that does take care of the Umbreon, which is actually super clutch. But what's even more clutch is I have one turn of Trick Room left. And I need to make the most of it because Iron Valiant is the final Pokemon. One of the scariest mines that I've been worried about this entire match. And it all comes down to a nice little 1v1 here. So it does actually get the booster energy speed boost. But of course it does not matter. I have one turn of Trick Room left. I'm the fastest elephant in the damn world. I can go for the Heavy Slam. And that is going to be enough to take care of the Iron Valiant. So Kaparaja came in extremely clutch with the Trick Room there. And I thought that was just a very satisfying ending. And it came really right down to it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. And uh, make sure to leave a like on the video because it really does help out. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.